I just answered 100, and I still have 311 to go. It's Maybe you should have answered the other ones faster. All right, guys, emails are absolutely insane. Thank you very much for being uh, so, uh, I don't know, cooperative and helping and stuff, but God, go to Google first. Please help me. I can't take it anymore. I'm going insane with all the emails. Now, you have a lot of good questions. I have a lot of good ones here. There's some stuff going on in the show. Uh, I have help today. If I have any questions I can't answer, I got my good buddy over here, Linus, is going to answer some of the questions for us. He's actually the guy that I go to when I have a question on computers. He knows stuff about stuff that is just, like, I have no idea, like SSE instructions and SIMID and, and networking and DHCP and all these things that I don't really know too much about. I know a lot about hardware and I know about operating systems and I know about certain types of programming and web design, but he knows about everything and it's ridiculous. It's sort of like Randy. You guys are never going to see Randy. You know, it's never going to happen, but Randy's another smart guy. Who's, let's uh, read some emails. I'm going to go like uh, a la whatever. I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm going to read whatever I find here. I have so many emails. So first one, Kenneth. Hey, I'm running Triple SLI on a computer and I think it's running a bit too hot. I got a Cosmos 1000 case and I was wondering if the Cosmos S side panel and door with the fan will fit on the Cosmos 1000, just to cool things down a bit. It would be lame if I bought the door and it didn't fit. If you know anything smarter I could do, let me know. That's a good question. I don't know if it'll fit. Uh, we had a Cosmos in here somewhere, the S. I don't know if we uh, still have it. I think someone took it home. Uh, if it's gonna fit, I don't think so. The Cosmos and the S and the 1000 have a different side. One, the Cosmos 1000 is square and the S has a little bit more of a curve to it. Um, but there are a few things you can do. Uh, pointable fans, just sticking fans literally between like the case and the video cards uh, on one end or on the flat end facing the glass, you can do that. Uh, Antec makes something called, uh, what's it called? The um, the Antec Spot Cool is like a fan on an arm and you can mount it to any motherboard hole and point that little fan towards anything. Uh, that'll work. Uh, you can also put a big 120 millimeter on the outside of your case where your expansion cards go and make it to suck hot air and then it'll suck hot air you know, out of the video cards even faster than the fan that's in there. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that your fan obviously is running at maximum 100%. Uh, so just find the balance and uh, add more fans. Adding fans is always the way to go. Uh, let me go to my next email here. We got a billion. Roger. Albert, I'm building a new rig and I've got a few problems in some key areas. This is the system config I was going for. I'll put my questions with a particular component and if you feel changes are required, please make them. That sounds good to me, not a problem. Core 2 quad, Q9450 at 2.66. I wanted to overclock this to around three, but I want to know if I can do this without overvolting the processor and should a stock cooler be enough or is an aftermarket cooler required? Well, an aftermarket cooler should be required. You should do it. You may be able to get the three gigahertz on the stock uh, GPU, uh, CPU cooler, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, definitely get some premium thermal compound and get a premium GPU, uh, CPU cooler, sorry, and uh, it should have worked no problem. You can definitely get it to three gigahertz. The Q9450 has a locked multiplier, so it's gonna be all front side bus. You're not gonna be changing the multiplier. Uh, will you have to do an overvolt? That's a good question, I really don't know. Um, possibly, most likely. You gotta remember, not every processor is built the same. Sometimes you get lucky and you get like this super processor that just overclocks and overclocks and overclocks and is so efficient and works great. And some guys get stuck with the bad ones that don't overclock at all. Um, so you have a lot of, uh, you know, you gotta know what you got. So if you had a good processor and it does overclock, you might be able to get all the way up there with no, with no voltage, but most likely you're gonna have to increase voltage and don't be afraid of it. Just be very careful with it. You know, don't increase your voltage until you're maxed out already, you know, adjusting the frequency. Um, let's go to the next one he had was a 780i motherboard. I didn't want the 790 because DDR3, but I read reviews where the Southbridge was getting too hot and overheating. Yes, like I just mentioned earlier, the 9800GX2 will overheat that, that chipset. Uh, again, put a fan on it. But when I checked the pics on both the 780 and 70i, they were almost the same. Uh, they, yeah, they're almost, they're in the same place. Four gigs of OCZ SLI ready DDR2 RAM, a Polit 9800GX2, 750 uh, gig Seagate Barracuda, 7200.11 with a 32 megabyte cache buffer, Coolmaster Real Pro, 850 watt power supply, and an 830i stacker case from Cooler Master, which is a nice case. That's about it. Please reply as fast as you can. Waiting for your reply. Okay, I get it. Thanks. All right, Pyro. His name's Pyro. Okay. Hurry. Hurry. Leave me alone. All right. So, uh, what do I think? Let's see. I don't see a problem with the setup. The 9800GX2 can run hot and, 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 and crash your Southbridge chipset. Uh, here's another thing you can consider. Think about running an Intel chipset. Have you ever thought about that? What about running a X38 or maybe an X48 chipset uh, and running two 4870s or 4870 X2 came out yesterday. Awesome card, very fast, I'm loving it. Uh, running two of them in quad fire and they are nasty. They're just gross. Like crisis is just like in its grave. It's 
filters, 30 inch monitor, just throw everything at it, it doesn't care. Uh, very powerful, you could consider two of those or one of those. The amount of money you're spending already with the GX2s and that, you could definitely do that. Um, if, if you're not gonna do it and you're gonna stay in video and you're gonna run the 900 GX2s, consider the 750i because you're not gonna use the third slot ever because it only lets you run, it's already, uh, you know, quad fire, what is it called, SLI, X4, Super SLI, whatever. You can only run two of those because it's quad SLI already. So what are you gonna do with the third one? Nothing, get the 750i, save yourself about 60, 70 bucks. Let's go to the next one. Be funny, Randy sending me an email. Randy just sent me an email saying, is Bigfoot real, yes or no? Um, Bigfoot most likely is real. Uh, today on CNN, there was a bunch of reports of uh, people that found a, they have a body of Bigfoot in a, in a refrigerator. He's like seven foot seven, weighs like 700 pounds, has like 15 inch feet, humanized human hands, and supposedly when they found him, he was dead, and there was a bunch of other ones around and they scattered, so that's a, some crazy story about Bigfoot. Whether it's real or not, it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, I, can just, I can actually check that right now. You gotta love the internet. No updates, yeah, exactly. No updates, pending scientific review and genome testing and all this crazy stuff. So for now, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that, that Bigfoot probably does exist, whether they found him today or not, probably not, but we'll see, who knows, man. It could be some crazy, it'll be a big hit to the mammalogy world. Everyone's gonna go crazy. All the scientists are gonna freak and grants and it's gonna be nuts. So uh, yeah, Randy, Bigfoot probably does exist. Let's go to the next computer related question and uh, we'll see what we got here. We got so many. All right, this is another email from Thomas. Thomas, dear Albert, I am in the market for a workstation graphics card. I currently use Maya and 3D Studio Max, and I want to build a new workstation. My question is, should I get a 4870X2 graphics card on my Intel board, or should I actually get a workstation specific card? What is the difference between a workstation card and a graphics card, and what justifies the extreme price difference? Well, that's a really good question, and I will actually throw this one to my good buddy Linus, as I said I would. Here, take this one. This one's a perfect one for you. Uh, well, basically, the difference is that you're gonna have the rendering that you're doing when you're doing your digital content creation, your CAD work like that, it's just a completely different type of math. Basically, what you've got there, because of the difference, your gaming cards, can they do the work? Yeah, they can do the work. Can they do it very well? Not really, it takes a little bit longer, it doesn't run all that fast. With the workstation cards themselves, you actually get there, because they're designed to do a speci very specific task, they actually do it a lot quicker than your gaming cards, despite the fact that your gaming cards typically are gonna have more memory, they're gonna have faster clocks on them, and all that. The big thing is all of those different algorithms that are in there, it's designed specifically for the type of math and the type of processing that you're gonna be using a lot in your digital content creation and in your CAD uh, computer-aided design work like that. That's really the big thing is uh, you're doing it for business, you're getting paid to do this stuff. The workstation cards are gonna get it done a lot quicker. You're gonna get your work, Your one project is gonna finish up a lot quicker, let you move on to the next project, get paid faster, you get work more work done in the same amount of time. Yeah, you can save a little money and go in a game high-end gaming card. They're gonna run a little bit cheaper. Long run, it's gonna cost you more because you can't do the work as fast. You've gotta sit there and sit there waiting longer to do all the work. So it really helps out that way a lot. Told you guys he knew all that stuff. He, he, he's, a, he's a G when it comes to that, he's real good. Uh, he's definitely right, uh, you know, they do different types of computations. Uh, another thing is you get really excellent drivers when you get those workstation cards and they're meant to work in specific with some of those programs like Maya and stuff. So you do pay extra for it. There's a lot of stuff on there. You get a lot of open GL access too that you don't get on certain video cards for certain features and settings. So there's, it's definitely worth the money too as well. All right, and that's your inbox for today. I'm done, I'm spent. Uh, thank you very much, Linus, for answering those questions. Great job. No problem, man. Alrighty, guys, uh, let's see what else I got to tell you. We got some great new videos coming up for you. We got some great products coming up. Uh, keep in mind, this Monday on the 18th of August, I will be hosting, uh, be co-hosting uh, Computer America. So go to computeramerica.com. You can listen live. It's a nationally syndicated radio show. Uh, I'll be on there. You can call in, ask questions, do whatever you want. Last time I did it, it was really fun. A lot of you guys called in. You saw the YouTube comments, you're like, that was me, that was me, I called. Uh, so call in, send me emails of questions. I'll see you guys next time.